You're listening to Mr. Radio, and I'm your host, Marshall. Today's guest has been described as equally rootsy and smooth as satin, delivering music that will stick in your head as well as your heart, and his honey-soaked vocals can exhibit swagger and occasionally a sadness. He is passionate and insightful, funky, folky, and as a frequent guest on Southeastern uh, Virginia radio station WHRV-FM, Barry Graham, the folk music producer at WHRV, has described our guest as having the soul of a poet and the songs to prove it. He began his musical career in high school playing with a variety of musical bands and later became a church music director. Our guest grew up in a Lutheran military family and now lives in Hagerstown, Maryland. On February 1st, 2022, he released a self-produced album of previously released recordings titled So Far, A Collection. It is my honor to introduce today's guest, Doug Alan Wilcox. Welcome to the show, Doug. Hi, Marshall. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, I understand that you grew up in a in a military family, but did either your father or your mother encourage you to pursue a career in music? Um, I was not necessarily in, encouraged in. in uh, in any way that one would recognize my my dad was in a a 50s rock and roll band for about a hot minute he had his guitar around the house for a little while there was always music in my family my my dad uh dad and mom both uh played records at home all the time i know i had the bug from very early on but there was not encouragement so much as I was not disallowed. <laughs> Once I finally got into things, uh, I was not disallowed. You know, I was not told, "Oh, don't ever do that." But uh, so, so I guess that's kind of where that stands. When you say that you you know that you got the bug at an early age, what what bug appeared that uh, that made you do this? <laughs> I. Re- <laughs> I remember of uh, now. Now I'm I'm an older person. One, one must uh, recognize this fact. I remember uh, my very first uh, one of my very first toys was a uh, a plastic Mickey Mouse guitar. There's a picture or two of, of of me with that guitar rattling around. I remember vaguely seeing Elvis Presley on. Uh, the Ed Sullivan Show, as well as the Beatles uh, on the Ed Sullivan Show, and, and uh, both really enjoying those. I had a little plastic bongo set. This would have been, <laughs> oh, gee, I don't know, you know, wh- when I was eight or ten or something. I remember s- singing with my sibling. We, we, we started a little, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what it sounded like, but we started a little singing group in our backyard there at one point. I don't know. It, I've always had that affinity. Um, now, now that said, when I was in um, high school, when I was in my senior year of high school, I had fully planned on uh, going into commercial art. I was I was going to go to art school. As it turned out, I got invited. I, it was suggested that I go try out uh, as a singer for this band that was that was starting around school which i did and i got the gig and uh from that moment specifically art school went out the window and <laughs> I, I was a musician for <laughs> for good or worse you know did, um, did you ever have any formal training um in music no no everything everything i know is is uh self-taught or you know learned along the road I would not suggest that method to anyone because it's taken me twice as long to to learn anything. But uh, it's it's that method has served me well over the years. Uh, do, do you read music? I do not. I, I never even got to that point. I do remember in high school we were taught to read the notes on the staff, and but at that point my having my mind set to 
to go into art, I actually didn't pay much attention in music class. Just a few seconds ago, you you were telling me about your Mickey Mouse guitar and your bongos. Yes, sir. So <laughs> y- you seem to have uh, quite an uh, eclectic taste in uh, in music, uh, going from the, the Beatles, uh, Elvis Presley. Who who were the people who influenced you early on in your career? I've probably had too many influences over my career for my own good. I I just I I love music of all sorts so much because what once i started getting into this and and um i kind of got out of that first band and and then did a a very very brief stint as a solo uh performer and i think from that point to this day probably the the singer songwriters the the james taylors of the world the bob dylan's uh uh et cetera et cetera have probably stuck with me the most as my biggest influences. Um, I like the intimate, uh, I like the uh, instances where a performer will, will open their heart through song. And uh, so uh, I, I, I think those influences have stuck with me the, the most. And from what I've read about you, not only uh, musicians, uh, but... Uh, Poets have also influenced you. I, I mentioned in in my opening that your vocals can exhibit swagger and occasionally a sadness. <laughs> uh, I'd like to talk about sadness. You, you've talked about how Robert Frost has influenced you yes. and how this might be related to sadness. Would, would you care to explain that a bit? There was a song in particular. Um, there are there are two tunes on the current collection that were brought over from a, a previous record uh, that I did just of, of Frost songs, uh, or of Frost poems, rather. A friend of mine got me started on the path to recording that record, and the very first poem that he brought to me, uh, we, he and I both have had our run-ins with depression of, of one intensity or another and he brought to me a a poem by robert frost called acquainted with the night and that poem uh became the catalyst for uh, a song uh that is not available online right now but it's called i know the night and so uh, frost was a big inspiration i had previously uh done a couple of songs based on uh the poetry of Rumi. Actually, I don't believe this is, this isn't on my website. This is a project in the works right now, but there's also a, uh, a local project going on right now called Songwriters and Poets, in which uh, local poets put forth a piece and get local songwriters to uh, write a song based on it. As it turns out, that's, <laughs> that's a sad song as well. That's about uh, uh departed loved ones but um writing about pain writing about loss writing about sadness i think is a pretty i don't want to i don't want to use the word easy but but there always seems to be good <laughs> good material there for uh for for a good song in in that sort of subject matter uh, if that makes sense. You sent me a couple of your tracks to play, and I found uh, your track titled This Small Town to perhaps yes. have some Robert Frost influences, not not only in the title, but uh, also in the lyrics, especially when you sing a traffic light, a hurried driver interrupts my reverie. Before I play it, would you care to introduce uh, This Small Town for us? Sure. Uh, well, I'm I'm honored with the uh, <laughs> the uh, the correlation there. Uh, th- this small town uh, was based on um, a painting. I-, I am into my second marriage at this point and have been for about ten years now. I- in my previous marriage, my ex-wife had a uh, a painting by uh, a local artist. We were living in uh, Frederick, Maryland at the time. This painting is of Frederick. Oh, um, like. 200, 250 years ago. Uh, Frederick is known for uh, the clustered spires from uh, 
a distance from an aerial view, you can see a number of church spires. And uh, so, so I love the painting, and, and the, song, uh, the song came about from that, uh, uh, a very old view of Frederick, Maryland. Well, let's take a listen to This Small Town. That was Doug Allen Wilcox playing This Small Town, which is included on his most recent CD, So Far, A Collection. I just have a quick question about the title of the album. Is it So Far, A Collection, or So Far, A Collection? <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. So, so, so far as, as in... Uh, this is where we are to this point. <laughs> okay, well, This Small Town was originally released on the album The Living Room Sessions, Part 1, yes. an album that WHRV's Belinda Elliott named as one of the best releases of 2020. Were the Living Room Sessions related to house concerts? And, and for listeners not familiar with the term house concerts, could you explain mm. th that for us? 
Oh, sure. Um, a house concert, uh, actually the concept goes back hundreds of years uh, where uh, patrons of the art uh, would bring in performers uh, into their homes and uh, there, there many times weren't concert halls uh, in a local town, uh, would bring in performers so that the, the local folks could could get a taste of, uh, of fine art in, in performance, poetry, art of, art of many, many sorts. So fast forward that into, into the 21st century, there are folks who are um, kind enough to uh, bring, again, poets or, or, or songwriters uh, and any sort of artists into their home, um, get a group of friends together, for a, a, a small performance, it's usually a, a donation-based thing. So that's I, I myself and, and any musician I know of. That's that's absolutely their favorite venue because it's 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 intimate. There is no pretense to that sort of performance. As that relates to the record, the living room sessions. Actually, the living room sessions was strictly. Uh, um, my guitar and I uh, recorded sort of live <laughs> in my living room, as it were, uh, uh, not a, not in a public performance type of situation, but it was an EP um, that was recorded really as you would hear me live. No other, ex- no additional instrumentation, uh, extra vocals. You mentioned uh, previously that somebody talked you into auditioning for a band back in high school. And uh, oh, yeah. I, I know you had uh, Blackjack, Logics, So What <laughs> Band, and Friends. And those are the names of the bands that you were involved with early on in your career. How, how did you get, besides the audition, how did you get started with the bands? Were they different uh, genres of music? Oh, my goodness, yes. The original band, the first band I got into, I had, I knew like maybe two chords on an acoustic guitar. And uh, I ended up playing a, a, a sort of a church-based open mic uh, type of thing and played, uh, if I recall, I played a Jonathan Edwards song badly, <laughs> but uh, someone heard me sing and, and went, hey, you should, you should check this band. They're looking for a singer. So, you know, that at that point, Time. We were doing dance music, but it was, you know, this was the early 70s, so, so it was all kind of psychedelia, uh, you know, it was the Santana, it was the, uh, it was the Jimi Hendrix, it was things with lots and lots of guitar solos. Since that, since that initial uh, period, have played jazz music with folks, have played... Uh, Countryish music with folks, um, pretty much the gamut. Uh, one band in particular, Friends, sort of made its hallmark the fact that we played from A to Z. Everything, uh, there, there were no boundaries, uh, so to speak. So I think that's where I, I, I said earlier that I maybe have too many influences for my own good. It's uh, <laughs> I've, I've somewhere along the line played just about every form of music with vocals that that there is so uh well not only have you played uh just about any form of music with vocals but you seem to have mastered many different instruments as well and uh i was listening to the wispy mop music acoustic radio (laughs) podcast and you stated that your first cd included the track salamanders where you played oh, yes. on a coffee can? W- was it a chuck full of nuts or a Maxwell House? You you have you have done your research, sir. I must say. <laughs> um, yeah, I believe it was chuck full of nuts. Actually, <laughs> that was an instrumental song that I had written uh, way back when, and uh, yeah, percussion uh, percussion was done on the coffee can there. So <laughs> I've since moved on to. Um, I do play uh, play djembe uh, and hand percussion, and uh, one of the things I do on the side now is uh, 
play with other singer songwriters or, or, or fill in with uh, small groups uh, on hand percussion. So what is djembe? Oh, um, it's a, an African hand drum. You can think, I think most people have a picture in their mind of what a conga drum is. It's sort of like that, but, but smaller. That's about, I think that's about the best description I can give you, but pretty much all drums come from ancient Africa. So, you know. Moving a little bit away from, uh, from uh, rock music and folk music, mm-hmm. you you became a church music director. How, how did that happen? When did it happen? That was an interesting period. <laughs> um, I actually, what, uh, the the genesis of that was uh, there was a a local unity church in Frederick, Maryland, not Unitarian, but uh, there's another flavor called Unity. There was a Unity Church in Frederick that started a concert series. Initially, I got in touch with someone I was interested in in playing their, their concert series. It was open to the public. It was generally folky-type music. Through that, I made some connections. Uh, I started attending the church. I started playing... Uh, some of their Sunday services, uh, the, the services at Unity always included music and uh, ha- had a range of uh, stuff from from folk type music to uh, some people who sort of had an R&B band, uh, lo- lots of things of that nature. And at a point they needed someone to pick up booking the folks that that came through um and at that point i had a a wide range of uh of contacts uh, from pretty much all over the united states through uh touring i had done and whatnot so um i started booking uh booking folks to come in played about once a month myself and that went on uh and, and I was labeled the, the, the music director, so, you know, for, for whatever that's worth. So that, that lasted a couple of years, and uh, I, I eventually drifted away from, from that church. I've never strictly been a, an organized church sort of person anyway. But uh, so, so that lasted a couple of years. It was uh, it was great while it lasted. It, it was a lot of fun, really. Well, I'm surprised that you said that you are not really an organized church person because, unfortunately, my next question was going to be, <laughs> does does religion or spirituality influence your writing? Well, I would say I would say greatly. Uh, I I uh, I don't I don't tend toward organized religion, but I have always been interested in uh, the spiritual side of things. And I would say, yeah, absolutely, yes. Uh, the great unknown and uh, the uh, the things that we're always searching for, uh, the the esoteric things that are difficult to understand. I, I think uh, those things make make their way into my music. Uh, yeah. Again, this is just my opinion, and other listeners may hear mm-hmm. the next selection that I'm going to play with a different take but your track shelter you to me at least Mm -hmm. especially it's punctuated by an organ in the background this track Mm -hmm. sounds very spiritual would you care to introduce shelter you for us um certainly i uh uh, you you picked up on the vibe that i wanted to get there i actually wanted to write uh i sat i sat down and i wanted to write a gospel song (laughs) so um I, th- I think this this tune, as well as some other songs, can be taken on on more than one level. I think this song can be taken on the level of of uh, a higher power that is watching over one. This can also be taken on the level of uh, more more of a uh, in, any sort of loving relationship. Uh, where someone is watching out for someone else. So uh, I I think that sort of describes Shelter You. Well, let's take a listen to Shelter You. I know you've been lonely I 
known you feel lost Understand the sadness Can I understand the cause Remember there were brighter days And the light will break on The dark surround it. I will shelter you. I will shelter you when there's a storm upon your ocean. I will shelter you when there's no beacon to behold. I will shelter you when your boat is on the water. Trying hard to find it. Searching for a calmer shore Well, keep looking for those brighter days For the light to shine on through And until that time, believe me I will shelter you I will shelter you That was Doug Allen Wilcox playing Shelter You, originally released on his album Foundation and now included on his most recent CD, So Far, A Collection. I mentioned the background organ in that track. Your album was self-produced, so does that mean that you are playing all of the instruments on the track? In other words, what's involved in self-producing an album? Um... Yeah, the first part of that question, yes, I'm playing all the instruments on the record. Uh, on so far, I'm playing everything except fiddle on on the last two tracks, I believe it is, of a wonderful player from from the D.C. area, Marcy Cochran, uh, plays fiddle on those two tunes. That's that's one instrument that uh, I've yet to to. Uh, to master at all but it, in terms of of what i'm doing um now i've done i've done records out of house so to speak where i've had a recording studio a, away from my home uh with, with an engineer with a producer that sort of thing over the past few years um hopefully i've gotten fluent enough that that i'm i'm doing good things on my own i have a a very small studio in my office. Um, I multi-track everything, which means I record one part at a time. I am my own producer. I, I figure out the arrangements. I figure out, uh, based on, on what I can play myself, what instruments I can play myself, what instruments are going on the track. And a lot of that is, a lot of that has to do with budget uh, 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 these days. Um, I don't quite have the budget to, to hire a bunch of studio musicians, so I get by with what I can do. But I, I've gotten fairly used to the recording process and then the uh, the mixing and the mastering process, and it's all all done from my my own studio. Um, I, I press everything here uh, at home. It's uh, <laughs> it's a cottage industry, uh, so to speak. For the listeners out. Uh, out in the uh, 
internet there who, who are interested in the technical intricacies involved in self-producing, mm -hmm. I, I strongly urge them to hear your interview on the Wispy Mop Music Acoustic Radio podcast, where you and your host Todd Middle, initial C. Walker, discuss everything from microphone placement to editing on a computer. I mean, that, that in itself is, yeah. is a great introduction to self-producing. Are you also involved in the publicity and the web presence for your music? Most, uh, most independent musicians that I know of, especially in the, the broader folk genre, uh, yes, we, we're sort of forced to do it all. Uh, but budgets are tight, and uh, fortunately with the Internet, if you have the motivation to do so, one one can learn how to do all these things yourself. Um, uh, the internet has become an indispensable tool for self promotion. In addition to the internet and podcasts, you're also fr a frequent guest on the Southeastern Virginia's radio station WHRV, where you recently discussed how you handled the pandemic lockdown, and and you mm -hmm. also discuss your cover of Bob Dylan's. Buckets of Rain on your CD, Dancing on Thin Air. <laughs> so how did you handle the pandemic lockdown? Oh, or are you still handling the pandemic lockdown? <laughs> yes, I'd say it's an ongoing process. I, I, I'd say I, I handled it uh, be better than some, but <laughs> I don't know. It, it's been, in my lifetime, I think this has been a, a defining moment for for so many people, for most people. I have my first in-person performance coming up at the end of this month. So I have not done, personally, have not done an in-person performance for about two years, which is weird in and of itself. Many folks I know did get onto the live streaming bandwagon and, and still are. Um, I did a couple, of, a couple of shows that way. I think how I handled it, was more in writing and, and using the time to, to record off and on and just sort of figuring out uh, who, <laughs> who I am and where I'm going from here. It's been, I don't know, interesting is the only word that comes to mind. Uh, uh, this, this thing where a lot of us have just straight up have, had the rug pulled out from under us, you know? Oh, you can't do what you're used to doing <laughs> any longer, or you haven't been able to. I'm still only planning on open air shows for a while here, just to make sure that things are safe. Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's dependent on your your own personal level of uh, what do they call it? Your your, your personal risk level, or yeah, something of that nature. But uh, Back to uh, the uh, the interview you had on the radio, you were talking about Dylan's buckets of rain. What what was involved mm -hmm. in getting permission to use Dylan's buckets of rain? I did have to get uh, permission, pay for permission to use the song. Back in in days previous, one would have to contact. Uh, oh, there there are probably several companies. The Harry Fox Agency seems to come to mind as as the big clearinghouse. You would contact Harry Fox Agency, and they would take care of the paper, paperwork, and you would pay a fee to use the song. These days, there are organizations on the Internet that provide the same service. So I had to to pay a small fee in order to release the song, and they ask you about how many copies of a particular recording you think you're going to to release it's uh based vaguely so you you pay your uh you pay your fee and uh then you have permission to use that copyrighted material that album kind of came and went out of circulation rather quickly so uh uh the tunes floating around floating around out there and still on some radio stations but uh i'm not actively selling it anymore so uh i'm not worried about about keeping up the the copyright payment on that one i think i paid for the limited amount of use that i that i described with them i actually think i've maybe paid like 50 bucks you know it wasn't bad 
You claim that most of your songs are not necessarily topical. Usually, I, I think of folk singers singing topical mm -hmm. songs, but, but you mm -hmm. don't seem to fall into that category. Why, why not? <laughs> um, because I don't want to, thank you. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't tend to write political songs well. I'm usually writing from a place of... of um, mm, I'm writing from a place in my heart. I'm writing from uh, back, back to the, the topic of spirituality, uh, or, or writing from a place of questioning. Um, the political stuff, the topical stuff, where, yes, uh, a lot of times folk singer and, and politics are, are, are synonymous. I think I, I, I'm probably in the broader category there, uh, and maybe more what's termed singer-songwriter on the whole. It's not that I'm not interested or not moved by what's going on in the news at any particular time. That just never seems to be my my forte. Uh, I, I think I, I write better using different motifs. Perhaps um, uh, being not topical is more like being evergreen and... Uh, I thought maybe we could hear another, what I consider an evergreen uh, rather than topical song, and it's also included on your latest CD, and, and the track is titled Long Day. Would you care mm -hmm. to introduce it for us? Sure. Um, I think a number of my songs introduce a problem, and then by the end we, we've sort of given some hope to that problem and, and and basically i think that's where i'm going with long day it's uh you you're facing some some difficulties but here here's a you know here's a little hope <laughs> by the end we get to to here's a little hope so that that's long day let's take a listen to long day No way I want to do that again The tunnel narrows Way up there into the distance No light, no wind Take a breath and gain perspective Is this vision all that you perceive? You don't have to play detective To find the light inside of Been counting up those heartbreaks Square one brings you back to home That bright treasure you hold out there in your horizon Where they really bring you all you need Come on back to where the hurt don't matter Shake the fog out of your weary eyes Feel that weight begin to shatter your heart galvanizes and breathe cause your life depends upon it believe you can overcome feel that light gathering before you your dreams and you are one On a journey with no wind mm -hmm. That was Doug Allen Wilcox playing Long Day, which was originally released on the album Foundation and is now included on his most recent CD, So Far, A Collection. The Frederick Coffee Company seems to be one of your frequent mm. venues. What's it like playing there before a live audience? Now, I, I know you've said you, you haven't 
played for over two years right. for a live audience, but can you remember what it was like? <laughs> well, if I if I go back into the memory banks, yes, um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the coffee company has has stopped uh, hosting live performances since the pandemic. They were, um, and and where I live in Hagerstown, Fre- Frederick is the next big town uh, over, and was was in fact my hometown. It's where I grew up. The coffee company operated being sort sort of the uh, premier local acoustic music venue for probably close to 20 years. Even being a coffee shop, uh, you know, selling coffee, selling sandwiches, that, that sort of thing, the vibe there was, was wonderful. I, I've had some of my better performances there. There, there always seemed to be... Between the people coming in and out, there always seemed to be a great listening audience there, and not <laughs> not quite a house concert, but nonetheless, I've had some very rapt listeners uh, at that venue. Um, it was truly special, and they had music three and even four times a week uh, at point over their career. Yeah, performances there were always very, very special. I have been in your area on several occasions. Uh, I've hmm. I've been riding my bicycle on the Gap Trail, and and I've seen a lot oh, of okay. different venues around near the trail. Uh, what about your in your own hometown? Do you have any venues that you play there? Unfortunately, in in Hagerstown right now, um, to the best of my knowledge, there is not much here for me <laughs> locally. This is a great town for. Uh, barroom blues bands, electric bands. And since the pandemic, I'm not even really sure what's happening with that. But um, the indie music world, and especially for singer-songwriters, and especially for folks who aren't in a band, who perform solo, it's an ever-changing landscape, even even without the pandemic, uh, things are always moving. Frederick, which was the, the, the closest big spot to play uh, at all, has kind of morphed. There are a lot more open mics now, a lot fewer, I don't know, uh, pr- probably zero places to play um, for solo acoustic performers. The Northern Virginia, D.C. area is still pretty good, although a lot of the indoor venues are not happening. I don't know. I, uh, r- right now I'm looking, uh, I'm doing uh, a lot of farmer's markets are on the, the map, open air venues, and, and I've had some great times playing farmer's markets. And then uh, I made get back into some light touring later on. Uh, I have some shows booked um, in Southern Virginia, and, and well, I'm, I'm kind of taking this year slowly. But, uh, yeah, lo- locally, uh, locally not very much except for those markets that I'm talking about. And, you know, that's a, a sort of a casual listening experience. So once I've gotten back into things on a more full-time basis, I, I may be looking into to touring more again unless local stuff comes up. For anyone that wants to hear more of your music, either live or on their home speakers, how can they find you? Very best way is uh, my website, www.dawilcox.com, short for Doug Allen Wilcox, D.A. Wilcox. And there they can uh, find your songs as well as uh, your gigs that are coming up i believe yes sir yes sir uh, uh links to all the music there's a calendar there pretty much a, a good clearing house for uh, everything that i'm doing i'd like to close our show with a song that apparently always gets a good audience when you're mm-hmm. in front of a live audience and uh, that's buddha drives a minivan care to tell us about it that's one of my very few songs that maybe has a, a, few, a few lines that elicit a chuckle. <laughs> I was on my way, you know, this is several years back now, I was on my way from uh, the Frederick area down to northern Virginia uh, 
in the middle of the week going to a gig and uh, a van passed me on the right uh, had the license plate Buddha number one and it uh, it struck me uh, oh the Buddha you know, it, I don't know thoughts went through my head it struck me oh the buddha is driving a better car than i do and i i started riffing on uh on buddha driving the minivan and it uh over a period of time morphed into the tune so let's listen to buddha drives a minivan Buddha drives a minivan, I know this cause I saw him Out there on the highway on the road to Shambhala He didn't look quite like the smiling man that we all know Changed out of his robes into some plain suburban clothes The look upon his face was somewhat stony-eyed and grim His disciples in the back were in the guise of soccer kids Children were all screaming about a trip to Chuck E. Cheese. The Buddha seemed to wish that he could find a Bodhi tree. Lack of meditation drew frustration on his brow, and through his lips there echoed forth a kind of holy growl. His charges stopped their yammering, you couldn't hear a sound when he said, If you all can't act peaceably, I'll turn this fan around. Find your own path Claim your own road When it comes to pass You will find a In your daily hassle as you're coming to and fro If you're on the highway, if you're somewhere on the road Watch the turning lane and be aware what's in your view You never know just where and you can never say just who You might see a minivan on its way through from the pond With a man checking the road signs trying to find his shambhala Find your own path Claim your own road When it comes to pass You will find That was Doug Allen Wilcox playing Buddha Drives a Minivan, originally released on his album Foundation, and now featured on his most recent CD, So Far, a Collection. So is uh, Shambhala like uh, Chuck E. Cheese? I, the, I didn't realize the two were related. <laughs> well, everything's related, Mark. <laughs> I, I don't know. Chuck E. Cheese may may uh, equate to Shambhala for some folks, uh, <laughs> little kids, anyway. <laughs> Doug Allen Wilcox, I'm so happy that you were able to take the time to speak with me, and I hope to hear from you again real soon. Thank you so much for having me. I, this has been a wonderful, uh, a wonderful time. You've been listening to Mr. Radio, and I'm your host, Marshall. This program was written and produced by Marshall. Our theme music was played by Ululation. Mr. Radio is available wherever you get your podcasts, including iTunes and Spotify. Subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. And don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of Mr. Radio.